When preparing for a session, is grounding necessary? When you do the breathing and sweeping, you've automatically grounded yourself, so there's no special preparation or thing that you have to do. It's taken care of already. And is it okay to talk during a session? I don't recommend it, although people see me doing that quite often, but that's because I've been running the energy for 30 years, and you get rather adept at it. But in a workshop, and in most occasions, people are focusing. So in other modalities, they're kind of talking and they're just kind of like being easy. With this, you're really working. You're giving it your all. You're staying there. You're focused. And so I don't recommend talking. But if you get to a level of skill and it's not like a really significant, important part of the session, you know, you can talk a little bit, but I don't really recommend it. What might that person be feeling? People tend to feel heat vibration, sensation through their body. They may feel energy rushing to various places. They may feel the pain decreasing. Uh, when you're working on structure, some people will actually feel the bones sliding back into alignment. When I worked on the cameraman yesterday, Richard, he could actually feel like his hips were turning. A lot of people feel like their foot sinking into the floor. It's a very unusual sensation when they do it. The first time I had my occipital ridge worked on, that's the bones in the back of the skull, it was the strangest thing. I was sitting there looking out the window, and all of a sudden, the window tipped sideways, like at an angle about like this. I kind of blinked my eyes and shook my head, and it became level again, because as the occipital ridge moved, the orbitals, that's in the eyes, moved in their sockets to become level. So maybe my head was like this, and it went level, but to me, it looked like the world tipped sideways. There's a wide range of experiences, but that's part of the fun of it, is to see what happens next when you get the experience of it yourself. Do you start on one area of the body and sometimes get clues that another area needs healing? It's quite common. I remember in one workshop, a woman had a migraine headache and she told the story of the headache and the story was it hurt in her head and she'd had the headache for a couple days before the class. The woman was working on it and about eight or 10 minutes later, she said she felt the energy all going to her throat. So a woman just put her hands on the throat and started running the energy there. Then it all went to the liver gallbladder area. So she went down, worked the liver gallbladder, the headache was gone. The acupuncturist in class said, oh, I know why some headaches are liver gallbladder headaches. I said, yes, but this is something an eight-year-old child could have done because go here, go here, go here. So it's very, very simple work that way. Now, the emotional and the physical are often connected. Absolutely. Does the physical healing aid the emotional healing? And the emotional a healing aids the physical healing. When you're giving a session, it's really common for emotions to come up, for people to have major releases. Um, and also, the physical healing is just as common. And it's only us in the West who want to label everything and say, this is physical, this is emotional, but we have a mind-body, a body-mind, a body or a, or a something. It's all linked together. And one woman was working on a, uh, she was a hypnotherapist. She worked with a woman who had multiple personality disorder. She did a little hypnotherapy with this. All these emotions came up, and she did quantum touch for two solid hours on this woman. All these emotions kept coming up over and over again. And she had a full integration experience of all her personalities in one single session. She ended up coming to a Quantum Touch workshop. And I didn't know who she was because the woman just said to me, one of, the pe one of the women here was the one I was talking about, but I'm not going to identify her. She just fit in like everybody else. She no longer needed to act out the different aspects of herself because they had become integrated. Wow, that's incredible. There's so many wonderful stories. Um, that I've heard today. How does one know when a session has ended? It seems like the possibilities just go on and on. Well, there are different sensations people feel in their hands. And when a part of the body has entrained, the energy usually starts leveling off or going down. Now, when it ends, it depends how much you want to work on. But sessions tend to last for anywhere from five minutes to an hour and depending on what you want to give to the person, depending on what they need. Mm. Is there anything that you should do when a session is complete, either for yourself or for the person? 
I like to, to have people drink a little water just to flush out whatever is coming through the system, but no more than that. There was a beautiful quote in the book about your vision for the future and the idea of us all healing one another. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, the idea is that we live in a world of possibilities. And I envision a world where the other six and a half billion people have learned to run energy. A world where people realize that their love has impact and value. Where they realize how important it is to be able to share that love with each other. Where kindness and consideration and healing become the norm. Where creativity and passion and joy become of value and creating beauty and health on the planet becomes important. I imagine that when this work gets properly researched, that we'll actually discover that there's a new branch of science. So I've coined it life force science until somebody comes up with a better name because the understanding of the life force energy is an understanding of our own life processes, who and what we are. But it also overlaps our understandings of physics, chemistry, biology, medicine, psychology, botany, history, philosophy, everything is affected by our understandings of the life force energy. But it's going to transform the way that we deal with people, the way we understand life itself and our priorities. Because when you look at the world through the filter of life force energy, then creativity in school becomes very important. That children having a good time becomes important. That we look for the life the things that enhance life. And when we have a system of commerce that encourages uh, commerce at any expense to people, then we're not really encouraging the full thriving of life. When we open up commerce to have a value system to go along with it that's encouraging the best solutions, not just the ones that make the most profit, but the ones that actually profit the people on a larger scale, then we've moved to a new world where humanity becomes humanitarian. So I imagine a world, however distant or close it might be, where we really learn to access this work because this is, in my mind, a lost skill, a lost piece of knowledge that other cultures have had in the past, but it is so vital to us now and our future. That's a beautiful vision, Richard. Thank you for sharing it with us. Hey, it's been my pleasure. Thank you.